cabbage grows well in many areas of Alaska. One favorite way to use cabbage is to make sauerkraut. I'm Julie Cassio with the Cooperative Extension Service of the University of Alaska Fairbanks. By definition, sauerkraut is acidic cabbage. It's the result of natural fermentation by bacteria in cabbage in the presence of 2 to 3 percent salt. Lactic acid is produced during this fermentation. This lactic acid, along with other byproducts of fermentation, gives sauerkraut its characteristic flavor and texture. Research on food preservation is an ongoing process. The United States Department of Agriculture and the Cooperative Extension Service continuously apply new research findings to their recommendations for food preservation techniques. The guidelines in this module may be revised as additional knowledge is gained that may increase the margin of safety or improve the quality of home preserved foods. Consult your local Cooperative Extension Office annually for updated information. You may do this through telephoning us, through looking for our resources on the web, or through our publications. Let's talk about equipment needed for making sauerkraut. A one gallon size container is needed for each five pounds of fresh vegetables. A five gallon container is the ideal size for fermenting about 25 pounds of shredded cabbage. Food grade plastic and glass containers and lead free stone crocks work well. Other one to three gallon non-food grade plastic containers may be used if lined with a clean food grade plastic bag. Be certain that foods contact only food grade plastics. Do not use garbage bags, trash liners, or plastic buckets not meant for food use or that have been used to store non-food products such as cleaning supplies. You'll also need a knife and cutting board or food processor or a mandolin to slice cabbage. A tamper such as a wooden spoon or a plastic potato masher canning and pickling salt, a scale, a large mixing bowl or pan, a measuring spoon, and then you'll need something to weight down the cabbage. It may be a muslin cloth, fat plate that fits snugly inside your container, and a non-metallic weight, or a brine-filled plastic bag. Okay. Let's grab our cabbage and get ready to slice it up. Mature large-headed types of cabbage weighing 6 to 15 pounds with a solid white interior are the most desirable for sauerkraut. Red cabbage may be used, but the color changes during fermentation and not everybody likes what results. Work with about five pounds of cabbage at a time. Remove the outer leaves and any portions that don't look very good, anything undesirable. Wash them and then drain them, which I've already done. Cut the cabbage into quarters. And remove the core. Then you're going to cut it into thin shreds, either using a mandolin, a shredder, or a knife. We're going to start with the mandolin. You do have to be careful when you're using a tool like this, not to get your fingers close to the blade. What you're looking for is uniform shreds of cabbage, and you want to get them about the thickness of a quarter. If you have larger shreds of cabbage, pick those out and put them aside. You can use those later for a cabbage or um, another kind of cabbage dish for coleslaw. The 
importance of having shreds of cabbage that are the same thickness is because of the fermentation process. You want them all to ferment about the same length of time. So they all need to be about the same thickness. Sometimes you'll have to cut up some of the cabbage toward the end so that you can use the nice pieces. You can also, if you don't have a shredder, just use a knife and cut all the shreds from your cabbage by hand. When you add the salt to the shredded cabbage, it causes the juices to be extracted from the cabbage. This juice contains fermentable sugars. The microorganisms present on the cabbage leaves will, in the absence of oxygen, use these sugars to produce the lactic acid. The acid is then what preserves the cabbage. It's very important to use the correct amount of salt when you're making cabbage. Less salt will cause the cabbage to spoil rather than to ferment. So if you want a product that has less salt, you still use the same amount of salt while you're fermenting the sauerkraut. But when the kraut is finished and it's been fermented, before you're ready to eat it, you can rinse off some of this excess salt. And we need just a little bit more cabbage in here. We're looking for five pounds of cabbage. The proportion of salt that you need to cabbage is five pounds of cabbage to three tablespoons of salt. So when we've gotten a little bit more cabbage, we're going to measure it out taking out our larger pieces. Sometimes, depending upon how you're holding the cabbage, you can see how this one is really thick. And since it's the rib of the cabbage, it, um, it, it, you really need to make sure that it's thin enough. And again, these can be either used in your compost pile or used for other cabbage dishes that you don't need to ferment, such as coleslaw or cooking it on the stove with some nice sausage. Good things to eat. Okay, Let's see how much cabbage we have. Let's see if I can do this balancing act so the container doesn't fall off of my scale as I'm putting the cabbage into measure. Okay, we have just about two and a half pounds. Okay, and we're going to add this to cabbage that we already have measured, which is another two and a half pounds, into our large container. And we're going to mix this five pounds total of cabbage with three tablespoons of salt. And I want this to be measured properly, so I'm going to use a straight edge. And sprinkle it all around my cabbage. And then mix it thoroughly. After I get this mixed thoroughly, I'm going to let it sit for five to ten minutes for that wilt to occur so that the natural juices again
come out of the cabbage. While we have been waiting for the cabbage that had the salt mixed into it to wilt, I've also chopped up some other cabbage, um, shredded it very finely, and I wanted to show the difference between cabbage, this is five pounds of cabbage with three tablespoons of salt added to it, and how this is beginning to wilt, and this is five pounds of cabbage that has not had the salt added to it yet. The salt that we've had wilting the longest is in this container. We're going to transfer it to a suitable, suitable fermentation container. You can actually ferment in smaller containers if you have smaller amounts of cabbage. And later we'll show you the quart jar method for fermenting cabbage and making sauerkraut. Right now we're going to go through the method for fermenting cabbage, large amounts of cabbage in a larger container. I'm going to pack that down, but in the meantime I want to get this cabbage started wilting. So again, our method is the same. Notice that in this cabbage we have some darker pieces of cabbage from the outer leaves. And these outer leaves, they're not going to hurt anything, but you need to know that at the end of your fermentation process, the darker green cabbage will be a darker color. It's nothing bad, it just means that the color is different. Since we have five pounds of cabbage, we're adding three tablespoons of salt and mixing it thoroughly. set aside and allow it to wilt. Okay, now this cabbage that's wilted, we want to press down. We can use a tamper. It's made for that purpose. A wooden spoon, or in this instance we're using a nylon potato masher. You notice there's some metal here. I do not want to touch the cabbage with the metal. I only want to use the nylon or the plastic part. Metal can interfere with the fermentation. And as I'm packing this, you'll notice that the juices are beginning to show up. This takes some energy. So the strong person in your house is a good candidate to recruit for this part of the method. And we're going to repeat. We've already done the shredding, as I've mentioned. We have some cabbage that's wilted. And we'll add the next layer. It's much easier to work with five pounds of cabbage at a time and layer it. You get a better opportunity to get as many juices out of the cabbage as possible. If you have cabbage that's fresh out of the field, you will find that it doesn't take as long for it to wilt and that you will get um, more juices. If you purchase cabbage or take cabbage that's been stored, the juices take a little bit more coaxing. Sometimes you even need to add 
a little bit of sugar to help those juices um, be made more readily. You can use your hands as well to press this down. Glass or this uh, plastic container is fun. Glasses too, because you can actually see the layers that you've put into the container. I'm going to continue pressing this, and we're going to wait while the uh, next part, next layer of our cabbage, next five-pound layer, is uh, wilting. If the final batch of cabbage is less than five pounds, adjust the salt. One pound of cabbage needs one and a third teaspoons of salt for proper fermentation. Since we have two pounds of cabbage in this container, we would add two and two-thirds teaspoon of salt. Right in this container, we have four five-pound batches of shredded cabbage. So it ma makes 20 pounds of cabbage. The cabbage should be covered with one to two inches of liquid. And here we have, if we press down on the cabbage, because it likes to float to the top of the juice, we can see that there's about, oh, and three quarters of an inch of juice on top. If that's the case, if the juice doesn't cover your cabbage or there's not enough, you may add some boiled and cooled brine. The concentration of this brine is one and a half tablespoons of salt to a quart of water. There, that looks good. Do not add plain water, as this will dilute the salt concentration that's necessary for proper fermentation. There's two methods of covering the cabbage and weighting it down to keep it underneath the brine, and I'm going to show you both of them. The first one that I'm going to show you, you cover the cabbage with a thin, white, clean cloth. And you want to tuck it down on the sides so that any floating tendrils of cabbage are caught underneath. And after you get the cloth tucked in on the sides, get that out of there, and you place a plate, a flat object that just fits beautifully inside the container, and then you want to put a weight on it. And the weight needs to press the cabbage down underneath the juice. That's one of me the methods that you can use. And the weight could be a weight like we have here. It could be uh, jars filled with brine uh, that are seated on top, just so that it's heavy enough to keep the cabbage underneath the juice. The other method that I want to show you uses a plastic bag and brine. We'll set this aside for now. You fill it with brine in case there's a leak in the bag. So you take your plastic bag. Oh, we need to take this out. I don't want to lose any of this wonderful juice. The brine concentration is the same, and because we need more brine, we used a gallon of water to six tablespoons of salt. We're placing it on top of the fermenting cabbage and getting it all the way out to the sides. You may need to adjust the amount of brine that you put into the cabbage or into the bag so that the cabbage stays underneath the brine. And in fact, I think I'm going to add a little bit more liquid to this bag. It's a good idea to use a thickness of two bags just in case the t uh, one that is actually holding the brine gets a puncture in it. Get the air out, tie it securely. In this instance, we could just zip it shut. The filled bag seals the cabbage from exposure to air and prevents the growth of film yeast or molds. It also serves as the weight. The bag should be of heavyweight, watertight plastic, and of course be food safe. Do not use plastic garbage or trash bags. The amount of the water in the bag, as I mentioned, can be adjusted. 
Watch as you have this sitting and fermenting for bubbles rising inside the fermenting liquid. This shows you that fermentation is occurring. A room temperature of 70 to 75 degrees is best for fermenting. It usually takes from three to four weeks to completely ferment, though it may work slower if it's kept at cooler temperatures. Hotter temperatures can be a danger and you can have more spoilage than actual fermentation taking place. If you weigh the cabbage down with a brine-filled bag, as we're showing here, don't disturb the container until normal fermentation is complete. And usually bubbling ceasing tells you that that fermentation is complete. If you use the plate and weight method, the first method that I showed you, check the kraut two or three times a week and remove any scum as it forms. Now that I've shown you how to prepare sauerkraut in large containers, I will show you the quart jar method. You start by preparing the cabbage in the same manner as for the large container method, using a grater or knife to ensure uniform slices. Combine with the salt in the same manner that we previously demonstrated. Then after allowing the cabbage to wilt, you pack it tightly into sterilized jars. And as you're packing, you want to leave a head space of two inches. It takes a little bit to get to that two inch space because we'll start with two inches, but as we pack it, of course it gets compressed. really nice and juicy. Just a little more. And this was about two pounds of cabbage. Okay, so as you can see that leaves liquid on top of the cabbage and there's about two inches of head space between the top of the liquid and the edge of the jar. You can either do a, one of a couple of different methods uh, in order to keep the cabbage below the brine. Pack a clean cloth into the headspace to keep the cabbage in the liquid and then put some kind of a weight on top of it. Or you can use small plastic bags filled with brine and use that to keep the cabbage submerged in the brine. I'm going to use that method today. and pour the brine in using the double bag method. I like the brine filled bags because I think that it does a good job of keeping the cabbage submerged. I want to make sure though that it fits snugly into all the corners so that no air gets inside. Remember we're looking for an anaerobic environment. Another option that you could do instead of the brine filled method is to take the bag out, have the uh, cloth inside, put the lid on top of the rim of the jar and put a band around it and tighten it. Not so tight, or not too tight, but tight enough to keep air out. Again, we're looking for that anaerobic environment. Let it ferment six days. Sometimes it takes a little longer if you have cooler temperatures in the room where the sauerkraut is working. 
until the liquid has a chance to settle and bubbles no longer rise to the surface. This sauerkraut has been fermenting for four weeks at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. During the first week, bubbles rose to the surface and broke. During subsequent weeks, bubbles continued to form, but not as actively. They just kind of sat in the sauerkraut. Now that the bubbles have stopped, fermentation is probably finished. Another indicator that fermentation has stopped is color change from opaque and white to golden yellow and translucent. Smell it. It should smell like sauerkraut. And then taste it to check for characteristic flavor. We're going to remove the bag that has been sitting, holding our kraut underneath the brine. Take a non-metallic spoon or utensil and get a little bit of that sauerkraut out. It tastes like sauerkraut. You may notice residue on the inside of the container. This is salt sediment left behind from moisture evaporation. It's not going to hurt anything. Fully fermented kraut may be stored in the refrigerator, in the freezer, or on a shelf after being canned. In the refrigerator, sauerkraut can be kept tightly covered for two to three months. Make sure sufficient juice covers the kraut before storing it in the refrigerator. You can use any kind of non-metal container and scoop it in. This particular container is a freezer container. You can check that by the package, the words on the package. You want to make sure that it has enough juice in it to cover. And we're going to have to add a little of the brine that we have, cooled in on the side. So we have enough brine to cover. This can be stored in the refrigerator for two to three months. as long as it's kept tightly covered. You could take your original container and put that in the refrigerator, depending upon whether you have enough place in your refrigerator for it to store. Okay, set that aside and put it in the refrigerator a little later. To store it in the freezer, pack your kraut and juice in rigid, plastic moisture vapor proof freezer container, a glass jar leaving one and a half inch headspace for expansion, or in plastic freezer bags. Make sure that you mark the freezer bag or the lid of your container with a permanent marker. Say the date frozen, indicate that it's sauerkraut because when you have containers in the freezer it's sometimes difficult to distinguish what they are and you can store it in the, ref in the freezer for best quality no more than 8 to 12 months. For canning the sauerkraut, place your boiling water canner on your heat source with enough water to cover the jars by at least one inch. Kraut can either be hot packed or raw packed. To hot pack, empty the kraut from the container that it was fermented in into a large heat source and bring it to 185 to 210 degrees. That's a simmering temperature. Do not boil. We'll be back when our kraut has come to a simmering temperature.
We're going to pack our hot sauerkraut into our hot, clean jars up to a half inch head space. And we'll put in the juice to fill in those holes. Mm, a little too much. If we get it too full, the problem ends up being that the juice will run over the edges and very well can compromise the seal. We do need to make sure that we clean the rims of our jars as that liquid brine can be very sticky. Then we're going to take the lids that have been softened according to manufacturer's directions about two minutes in hot water and add the lids that will keep the, or add the ri rings on that will keep the lids from popping off during the processing. We'll add our hot liquid hot jars to our boiling water in the boiling water bath. And as soon as that comes back up to boil, we want to set our timer for the correct processing time. It's important to start the processing time when the water comes to a boil. Jars should be processed for 10 minutes when they're pint jars and 15 minutes when they're quart jars. After the processing time has elapsed, remove the jars, set them upright, and allow them to cool. And when they're cool, of course, we're going to label. To raw pack, pack your clean jars with unheated kraut and liquid, leaving a half inch headspace again. This time you're going to start with cool water in your canner and bring the whole thing to a boil. Start your processing time again. When the boil comes up, it will process, be processed 20 minutes for pint jars and 25 minutes for quart jars. If you have fermented your cabbage into sauerkraut using the quart jar method, you will pack it only using the hot pack method. So we're going to remove the brine filled bag from the top that has held the kraut underneath the brine during the fermentation process. We're going to put it into a pan of cool water up to the rim of the neck of the jar. And we're covering that pot and putting it on our heat source. We're going to bring that to a boil and boil it for 10 minutes. Alternately, if you wanted to take it out of the jar, you could pour the kraut into a container and put it on the heat source. Again, though, you want to boil it for 10 minutes. This is different than what I told you about processing with a hot pack for sauerkraut that had been processed, or fermented, rather, in a larger quantity. With the one quart jar method, you need to have that added measure of safety of boiling the liquid for, and the kraut together for 10 minutes before you place it into the jar. Then you will follow the hot pack procedure. So now we've gone over three methods of storing your sauerkraut. You can either, either put it in the refrigerator in a tightly covered container, store it in the freezer in a freezer-proof container, or make it shelf stable by heat processing it and storing it on the shelf. When the canning process is complete and your jars have cooled for 12 hours, check the seals by tapping the jar lids. If some jars did not seal, reprocess the unsealed jar lids using a fresh jar lid. Reprocessing must be completed within 24 hours. Alternatively, you may freeze the contents of unsealed jars or refrigerate and use within a couple of days. Rings may be removed from the jars when the cooling process is complete and you've checked the seal. Label your jars with the date, 
processing method and processing time. And of course, it's good to put the product on there too. Sometimes when they sit on the shelves for a while, you may not remember what's in each of those jars. Store your canned goods in a cool, dark place. For best quality, use sauerkraut within a year. People often have questions about spoilage in sauerkraut. Spoilage of sauerkraut is indicated by undesirable color, off odors, and soft texture. If your kraut is spoiled, here are some things that may have gone wrong. Soft sauerkraut may be due to insufficient salt, uneven distribution of salt, or air pockets caused by improper packing. Measure your salt accurately, mix it well with the cabbage to get rid of those problems, and pack it carefully and be sure to weight it properly to get rid of air pockets. Pink kraut is caused by the growth of certain types of yeast. On, usually it's on the surface of the kraut. These yeasts may grow if there is too much salt, again if there is an uneven distribution of salt, or if the kraut is improperly covered or weighted during fermentation. Rotted kraut is usually found at the surface where the cabbage has not been covered sufficiently to exclude air during fermentation. Scum may also form on the surface. The scum does not cause trouble as long as it's skimmed off before it stops the fermentation process. Remove it every day or so. For spoilage which occurs on the surface, you may be able to remove the spoiled kraut and use the rest. Molds that grow on the surface of kraut can change the acidity making it susceptible to spoilage microorganisms that are harmful. Molds grow best when they get some air. Try to keep the kraut container airtight. Check your kraut often for mold and quickly remove any that you see. Darkness in kraut may be caused by improperly trimmed cabbage, that's the darker green leaves, give a darker color in the kraut. And that's not bad, but it also may be due to insufficient brine in the fermenting cabbage, exposure to air, or a long storage period in the crock after fermentation is complete may also result in darkened kraut. Another cause of darkening may be high temperatures during the fermentation stage, processing stage, or during storage. These are some ideas on what may have gone wrong with your sauerkraut if spoilage occurs.